John Wind didn't set out to become a vintage-inspired jeweler, but when he started rearing his personal creations back in the 80s, they began to sell themselves. Since then, he's designed thousands of necklaces, brooches, earrings, bracelets, and more, mixing elements from the past with an eye toward the future. Well, I visited his Maximal Art Studio to find out how these affordable heirlooms come to be. John, what drew you into wanting to make jewelry? Well, I went to art school in London in oh, the early 80s. And um, in addition to, be, to being a good student during the day, at night I was taking advantage of London's fashion and music uh, scenes and just getting really swept up into the energy. And people were dressing up like it was a costume party every day. And so I just, for fun, started buying bits of uh, old jewelry, uh, broken watch parts at local flea markets, uh, sticking them in clay, putting a safety pin through the back, and then when it dried, putting it on my coat. So it wasn't really jewelry, it was almost yeah. like little sculptures to wear. Yeah. But uh, people started asking me about them and stopping me literally on the streets. They I were... want to buy that! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm six foot six and yeah. a guy wearing yeah. these enormous brooches. So I started selling the, the, these brooches very informally to friends um, at school. And then one step at a time, people said, oh, you should go to this local store that sells young designer jewelry. And then somebody said, uh, if you learned how to make them a little better, I could sell them at this store. Before I knew it, I was selling to Harrods and to Browns. I was wow. in British You Vogue. started at the top, it sounds Within like. six months, just like that. And I had never in my life thought about being a jewelry designer, but uh, fate intervened. In 1985, John moved back to his hometown of Philadelphia and started his company, Maximal Art. There, he continued to refine his unique modern vintage style. What we ended up doing was finding a whole other customer base that, uh, in the gift world, uh, where the jewelry, it had to be something that a customer would buy to give as a gift to your sister, your mom, your friend, yeah. um, but it wasn't, it wasn't so dependent on fashion. Right. So over the 90s and into the 2000s, we developed uh, a fashion jewelry business for the gift world. Now, fashion has turned the corner again, and yeah. we do both. So we do great, big, fun costume well, well, jewelry. Now this, is, <laughs> what, this, I understand, is a cotton ball? Exactly. Well, you, how do you get it to be so yeah. perfect? We don't make the cotton balls, but I found a company in Germany that, that invented this process of literally dipping a cotton ball in an acrylic to make it hard, and then shaping it, spinning it, I think, and then coating it with a pearl finish. So they're durable, but as you can attest, they're light as a yeah. feather. Oh my goodness, yeah, they're wonderful. Yeah, it's one of our best-selling collections. Is, is that right? Yeah. John, how does an artist like you build a business. I was very fortunate. Um, almost immediately when I came back from London, I met a woman named Robin Cook, who has worked with me since then, 25 years now. And she's the president of the company. So I'm able to really focus on designing. And uh, we say I'm the front man of the company. I do a lot of right. trade shows and go to stores. And she really uh, focuses on growing the business managing uh, production, sales, the office. I don't think an artist can do it alone. Okay, now I'd love it if you tell us, do you do it by the year? Do you have, do you change the line? There's, there's two main seasons a year, a spring collection and then a fall slash holiday collection. The, the first step, once we start thinking about a season, is to create a storyboard. So I brought an example here, two different storyboards from our upcoming fall holiday collection. Uh, the first story is called Flea Market Chic. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so I'll, I'll find uh, fashion pictures. This is from Women's Wear Daily. Um, fun materials. Here's a piece of wallpaper. This was one of Elizabeth Taylor's charm bracelets. So anyway, a mixture of, uh, of ideas and, and moods. And from this, um, I and Wendy and Emily and the design department, we start to seek out parts, uh, silhouettes, ways to interpret this 
in our own collection. The other story that we did uh, are working on for Holiday is called Glamour. Right. And it's, uh, like I said before, everything we do is, has a vintage side and a modern side. So here we have vintage Glamour. Um, right. Nicole Kidman at this year's Oscar is wearing a very uh, old-fashioned, uh, hers is probably diamonds. We have it in, uh, in costume. Right. This is a photo from the 1920s. So mixing high and low, old and new. Where do you find the interesting parts and the antique pieces? Um, I go to a lot of uh, flea markets where I'll buy a single original piece and then have it reproduced. Yeah. Or, um, especially up in New England, there are dozens of factories that have been making jewelry components since the 1950s. The initials that we make, I ordered an initial and the guy said, John, the last time someone ordered this was in the 1960s. So then I knew I found the right thing because I knew that it was vintage and that uh, people were ready for it again. Okay. So after we find materials and start making prototypes that relate to the storyboard, and then the business kicks in and we start thinking, about merchandising and how many pieces at different price points and do we have enough earrings compared to charms, necklaces, uh, what, what do our customers want, what's going to sell, what did well last season. So really thinking it through in a very systematic way. Right. Then we edit down, we compile a collection and from there it goes out into the world. I understand, John. We're uh, going to make a charm bracelet? Yes, we are. Okay, and, I uh, like that. I thought it would Love be fun it. for you to choose there, which of our two themes, either glamour or flea market chic, did you want to work on? Glamour. Glamour. At my <laughs> stage, I can't take a chance. We have a tray here with about 20 charms, different glamorous charms. Yeah. And I have a couple of chains to choose from. So the first step is pick the chain that you'd like to work on. I, I, I almost think this. Okay, um, the big gold chain. So now, why don't you pick your favorite charms and we'll put together a bracelet. It, it doesn't have to all match. The charms the were so interesting, it was hard to choose. Thankfully, there was room for lots okay. of them. Somehow the balance is going to look better. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. This is. I'll show you how easy it is. These are, the, uh, these are the charms that I was telling you we do so well with. They all have a clasp on it, so oh, you, so you, you don't need in. you don't need a jump. I mean, you don't need jump rings or pliers. We just find the center point of the bracelet. Now, do, you, and do people do this in the stores? People like do it in the doing? stores. Yep. So there, it's already on. One, two, three. And now we have a glamorous yeah. charm bracelet. It's fun. John, so how do you mass produce these here to send out? Well, the, the individual parts we either make, this is done all in my studio here in Philadelphia. Right. A piece like this, it's an import item. The crystals are set into a, um, a pewter casting and we buy these. We'll order a few hundred of them and then what we do in-house is we add the clasp. Not everything that we sell is a charm. So in other cases, like your necklaces, we assemble the finished necklace uh, in-house here. Right. And uh, y y as you saw, there's about 15 people who are making jewelry all day long. Don, what would you say is your mission? in your work? My mission in my work is to uplift other people. I love to create and I love to uplift. Mm -hmm. And by creating Maximal Art, uh, 30 of us here are all working with the same goal, mm -hmm. making jewelry that uplift people, that they'll want to uh, share with their families, that they'll want to turn into heirlooms, but that it's affordable and easy, easily accessible, unlike a piece of Victorian jewelry. What a talented and genuinely nice man. And now that I'm 90, I love the fact that he sees the value of vintage. Thanks for exploring the arts with me tonight. And until next time, I'm Suzanne Roberts.